What's up? This is my guide for the Republic of Palau regarding diving, what I went through to get there, and other information from my family vacation. Be sure to like and subscribe. I will also be working on creating other videos from my family vacation to Palau. You probably already know this. Palau is one of the most popular places and often considered one of the best destinations for diving. So with being so close, it has been on the list of places to visit. Unlike my trip to Chuuk, which was just my wife and I, my children went along as well. My oldest two are certified divers, while the youngest is not quite old enough to be certified yet. With everything going on with COVID, early this year, my wife and I knew it would be a possibility that Palau would open. Palau opened for travel, but when the government updated their travel requirements, it restricted my oldest child from being able to go without having to quarantine for a period of time. I did not have the time off for work to support this, so at first planning and uh, preparing for the trip did not move forward. Just over a week before we actually left, we got an email from Fish and Fins, the dive shop there we went through, about the new restrictions and requirements being changed that allowed for us to request an exemption for my oldest child. So my wife immediately started on that process of requesting the vaccination exemption, which was to send an email to a government official requesting the exemption. Here's the website where we found the latest information on how to go about meeting the restrictions and requirements in order to travel to Palau. From the main page, you follow the learn more link that takes you to the page with the Palau commercial passenger entry policy. This page also has a link to the Ministry of Health Directive, which at the time was number 20-21. You need to completely read both the entry policy and the um, MOH directive to make sure you follow their policies and directives to ensure that you can enter the country and not have to quarantine. My family and I were fortunate that we only had a two hour flight from Guam to Palau. However, there were others on the flight that likely came from other locations. While in the airports, I noticed the frustration and wasted time of those that were not prepared. I highly recommend being prepared with your passport, COVID vaccination cards, and other documentation. For this trip, my wife had all of this for everyone in our group. She kept everything in one location, with some of it being in a folder. So when it was our turn at whatever point in the experience that we had to produce any of the information, it was all together and allowed for whatever was being requested to be produced in a timely manner. I witnessed many travelers having to go in one bag for their passport and then hunt another bag or another location for other documentation. Some seemed very frustrated at trying to locate whatever was being requested. So, in other words, be prepared. If you plan to take a trip to Palau soon, you will likely have connecting flights to be able to make it. At the time of our trip, United Airlines was only flying to Palau from Guam only on sunny nights and then returning to Guam early Monday morning, so once a week. I recently saw where Palau is working with United to increase the number of flights. I do not know if any other airlines are currently going to Palau. Anyway, you still need to research transit requirements for all the location of connecting flights. An example is this, if you're flying from the U.S. through Hawaii through Guam to Palau, you may need to meet travel requirements for both Hawaii and Guam, even though you're only switching flights. I think Guam at the moment currently um, actually doesn't have anything, but that could always change. Hawaii is constantly changing as we actually looked at going on a vacation there, but it was cost prohibitive. But the last I saw, they had a QR system, QR code system in place that I think even uh, those traveling through Hawaii and not even stopping there had to set up and have ready for passing through Hawaii. But like I said, it's constantly changing. So that's something you need to check on before you go. Not long after takeoff, we were given customs forms and help questionnaires. Everyone in the group had to complete each. So that was five custom forms and five help questionnaires for our family. Normally, like everywhere I've flown into or for other countries, I've been given like one customs form per family. So this was different. Now, I've been to a few countries around the world, and so far, Palau has been the strictest on the amount of duty-free items you can bring in without being taxed. 
if I remember correctly, you can only bring like two liters of alcohol, one pack of cigarettes, or 15 grams of other tobacco products. Plan accordingly for your vices. The bar at our hotel had a limited selection, but that's understandable since there haven't been any tourists there. I'm not sure if their selection gets better once things are normal. So with only one flight a week at the time of our trip and per the government requirements that you might know if you've already read the entry policy and the COVID direction, directive, you're required to wear a mask for the first five days in Palau. And on the fifth day, you're required to report to the hospital and take a mandatory COVID test. They'll call you and remind you like the night before to tell you to show up. Everyone from your flight and others that need to test a fly out will be there. We arrived early just after 7 a.m. They started taking payments at 7.30. It was $25 for the test and an additional $5 if you wanted a printed copy of the test results. This cost is per person. Make sure you get the paper copy of the test results. It seemed if we did not have this for everyone that a person at the airport was not going to let, it, let us get on our um, return flight to Guam even though we should have been able to do so. Plus you may need it for connecting flights or wherever your final destination is. My family was number 13 through 17 in line and by the time we were tested and left it had been around two hours. So plan your activities um, this day around having to do this. It seemed most places understood this and accommodated for it though. So for us, we tested on Friday and the printout of our results were ready for pickup on Saturday afternoon at the emergency department. May the odds be in your favor. For our vacation, we were able to book most of everything through the dive shop that we used to go diving, which was fish and fins. They created a package for us, arranged hotel accommodations, and set up other activities to meet our family's needs and requests. There seems to be a number of dive shops in Palau to choose from based on what part of the world you are from so that you're able to safely dive with guides who speak your native language. For our dive package, my wife and I dived a total of four days, completing 10 dives. Our orders did three days of diving and our other child did two days of diving. Lunch is provided on these days because you take small dive boats to the dive sites and this often can take over an hour to reach. At the time, Nachox was free and I was able to use a 100 cubic foot scuba tank for an additional $5 per tank. The shop also provided transportation to and from the hotel. Sometimes this even including them picking us up at the dock with the boat at our hotel. They have gear rent stations and storage. They also provided babysitting service for the children. Their dive boat has a crew of two with an operator and a dive guide. For our trip, Fish and Fins went out of their way to make it our vacation very enjoyable. For those that are looking for the live aboard experience, they also have this and at the time we're hoping to restart this later in the year. Check out their website for all the activities they offer because they offer a lot that includes stuff on land as well. For a hotel, we stayed at the Cove Resort Palau. Our room had two separate bedrooms, a bathroom, and a family room. Each main room had a TV. Breakfast was included with our stay. For our trip, it was cooked to order, but it normally, normally would be a buffet. The hotel even provides towels for us to take with us when we, need, when we leave the resort. The resort has Wi-Fi, a large pool, and an open-air restaurant. I'm not sure if they normally serve lunch. They did not seem to do so while we were there. Our room ha did have a few minor issues, but they were promptly taken care of. The staff also went out of their way to help arranging other needs, such as prepaid phone cards, cards and renting a car. I'll cover more about that later. Check out their website to learn more and determine if they can meet your needs. Some of our non-diving activities included a visit to Jellyfish Lake, the Milky Way, and swimming with dolphins. Among the rock islands or lakes, I were told, or I was told, there are around 30 to 50 lakes. Out of all of these, about four or five have jellyfish in them, and there's only one that allows for you to snorkel in the lake with the jellyfish. There's an additional permit fee to do this, and it's $100 per person. On our third day of diving, the entire family went to the lake before going to the dive sites, and then afterwards we concluded with by paying a visit to Milky Way. This is a secluded area in the Rock Islands that has clay, mud, sand bottom. 
that is often used to smear on yourself. It was a hit with the kids. Also, before we left, we paid a visit to Dolphin Pacific, where we encountered dolphins. We were able to assist with feeding, pet the dolphins, and swim with them. Most of these dolphins are rescues from the Japanese dolphin hunt, and I believe did not learn the skills to survive in the wild. The kids really enjoyed that as well. I mentioned before that the boat rides often take an hour or more to reach dive sites. Well, part of this trip is riding through the famous rock islands. Many dive sites, including famous sites such as Blue Corner, are near some of these islands. Be prepared to document your journey through these rock islands. The dive boat is likely to stop by some of the prominent features for pictures some of, such as some of the arches. If you do plan on activities that involve diving, snorkeling, or any other activity where you get wet, I recommend you bring a bag to keep dry items in. I was surprised how chilly I got in between dives on the dive boat. However, I was prepared. We all brought rain jackets that we also used as windbreakers during the, our surface intervals. You will need to protect yourself from the sun as too. We use a combination of rash guards, hat, neck covers, and sunscreen to do so. For your dive gear, bring your surface marker buoy, dive light, spare parts, and basic tools. Some of this is for safety, some you might need, and the rest just in case. Here's some more information related to our trip. Obviously, this is what we experience, which is not everything, but it's a place to start. I recommend downloading Google Maps for Palau. It will have some information without internet, and you can get the rest when you have Wi-Fi. Just about every night, we tried a new place to eat. All were locally recommended. We ate at the Taj, Barracuda Bar and Restaurant, Rock Island Cafe, Carp, Palm Bay Bistro, and of course the Hungry Marlin at our hotel. Some places are pricey and others are cheap. Some provide food in large portions to share. We also found, and I'm not sure if I'm saying this the right, and I'm probably not, La Amarena Gelato Shop and visited there more than once. There did not seem to be any fast food style establishments and many places may close early on certain days or open later in the day. I got a prepaid SIM card for both my wife and my phone. It was $10 per card. I was not impressed with this. You could use up all of the $10 credit in a short period of time, as in just a few hours if you're not careful. I ended up getting a second card for us when we were exploring by vehicle. We would keep our data off and try to rely on much or rely as much as possible on Wi-Fi. Many places have it and will allow you access if you are a customer. The hotel helped me rent a car for the, our last three days that we were there. The rate was about $50 a day for a compact car that was right-hand drive. I kept turning on the windshield wipers trying to use my turn signals. It may be possible to find a vehicle at a slightly cheaper rate. We used it to explore the islands and visit shops. My wife got us Palauan storyboard, which is a wood carving of Palauan legends. She got the manna and a turtle. I don't know how to say the name of the island that the airport is on and also the capital, but it has a 40 plus mile American two lane road system built in a big loop. We drove one part on one day, going over to the Capitol Hill and eating at a small place for lunch. The next day we did the same going the other way and went to the very northern part of the island. There happened to be a place there to eat and we had lunch there as well. Finally, since our flight didn't leave out until 1 a.m., our hotel allowed us to stay until our ride took us to the airport. If once weekly flights at night are still occurring when you happen to go, ask your hotel as soon as you can on how they may accommodate your group. We had hoped to visit other places such as museums and the aquarium, but many places were either closed when we tried to go or had reduced hours of operation. Palau was an awesome experience for my whole family and we hope to return. I hope you've enjoyed my guide. It's helpful and gives you a place to start and possibly planning your trip to Palau. Do your research, plan, and prepare. It's likely that my information will change due to COVID or because things change. And my recommendations are based on my experience. Your mileage may differ. Don't forget, those that fail to plan 
plan to fail. Thanks for watching. Later.